Kreatür. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Hamdan yuafi ni'amaha ve yukafi ve mazidah. Ya Rabbi laka elhamdu. Kema yenbagi li jalali vajhika ve azimi sultanik. Allahumma salli ve sallim mubarek ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Ve ala men tabihum bi ihsanin ila yawmuddin. Rabbi şirah li sadri ve yasir li amri. Vahlul uqdatan min lisani yafahu qawli. Rabbi a'udhu bika min hamzat al-shayatin. وأعوذ بك ربي أن يحضرون ربي أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك ربي أن يحضرون ربي أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك ربي أن يحضرون اللهم انفعني بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما, وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزلنا علما ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين الحمد لله we have our final session in relation to our discussions about the virtues of the holy month of Ramadan and fasting. And alhamdulillah, throughout our sessions, we have covered many hadith where different Sahaba and different family members of the Prophet وسلم, narrated what they heard the Messenger, what they heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say in regards to the virtues of fasting in the month of Ramadan or fasting in general or fasting after Ramadan in regards to the virtues of the holy month of Ramadan and its virtues of the month in general and also specifically Laylatul al-Qadr. So as we have only a few days left of this blessed month, we should take advantage of our time and work towards making sure that we end this month in a positive way, in a way that leads to everything that we've done previously being accepted and being rewarded and being a means by which we can be forgiven and granted mercy and enter paradise and be saved from the hellfire. Because we said the principle is, or the principle the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the hadith, وَالْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ Actions are by their into actions are by their endings, or actions are by their seal. So, let us seal this month, inshaAllah. Let us seal this month, inshaAllah Ta'ala, with only good. As we reach its end, let us make sure that we seal this month with ibadah, dhikr, and knowledge and doing good deeds and dua and istighfar and tilaw of the Quran. And inshallah, as we read these hadith and continue reading them, this will encourage us to do that and this will help us in fulfilling that objective. So in this hadith, it's mentioned that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam ascended the pulpit or ascended the minbar, as we say in Arabic, where the Imam gives the khutbah. And he said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Amin is what we call in Arabic is some fa'al, which is basically a way of saying accept or a, a, pleading for an acceptance, a stajib, right? Where you're asking, or you're asking uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your prayer, your supplication, your request. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it was narrated that the Sahaba, radi Allah on whom they saw him ascend the pulpits, the minbar, and he said, Amin, Amin, Amin. It was said, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you ascended the pulpit and said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. So the Sahaba, they were surprised because they had heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say Ameen three times as he ascended the pulpit, but they did not hear or witness anyone making dua um, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was ascending the pulpit. So they wanted to uh, have the explanation or the understanding of this event. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Jibreela atani faqal man adraka shahra Ramadan wa lam yughfar lahu fadakhala al-nar faaba'adahu Allahu kul ameen faqultu ameen wa man adraka abawayhi aw ahaduhuma falam yabarrahuma falam yabarrahuma famata fadakhala al-nar faaba'adahu Allahu kul ameen faqultu ameen وَمَنْ ذُكِرْ وَمَنْ ذُكِرْتُ عِنْدَهُ فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكَ وَمَنْ وَمَنْ ذُكِرْتُ عِنْدَهُ وَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكَ فَمَاتَ فَدَخَلَ النَّارَ فَأَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهُ قُلْ آمِينَ فَقُلْتُ آمِينَ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, he said what means verily Gabriel or the angel Jibreel came to me and he said whoever reaches the month of Ramadan and he is not forgiven then he will enter the hellfire and Allah will cast him far away. So say, Amin. I said, Amin. Whoever sees his parents in their old age or both 
or one or both of them, one or both of them, and he does not honor them and he dies, then he will enter the hellfire and Allah will cast them far away. So say Amin. I said Amin. Whoever has your name mentioned in his presence, right? Um, and he does not send blessings upon you and he dies, then he will enter hellfire and Allah will cast them away. So say Amin. I said Amin. Here it's, here it's written, Man dhukirtu. I think it should be Man dhukirta. Uh, man dhukirta indahum. Wallahu ta'ala Wallahu ta'ala knows best. So here the Prophet ﷺ is mentioning three things that the angel Jibreel made dua for. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Amin to all of them. And all of these are important and relevant to us, right? If you have someone, for example, that they were they had their parents reach old age, and they were, and obviously we know being good to your parents is a very rewardable and righteous obligation in, in Islam. So if somebody did not take advantage of their parents being in old age and being good to them or serving them, even if it's only one of them, and does not honor them, meaning is not righteous towards them, does not ex behave excellently towards them, and then they die and they enter hell hellfire, may Allah cast them far away. The Prophet ﷺ said, Amin. In other words, they did not take advantage of their parents or use their parents as a way to enter paradise and have the forgiveness and the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, the Prophet ﷺ was told by Sayyidina Jibreel to say, if anyone mentions you, mentions your name, and they refuse to send blessings or don't send blessings upon you and they die, and they answer the hellfire, may Allah cast them far away. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Amin. And this is a warning against those people who choose not to say sallallahu alaihi wasallam when mentioning the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right um sending salawats upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has many benefits and virtues and it is part of the right of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam over us that whenever he is mentioned we invoke peace and blessings we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him with peace and blessings so we can say sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as you know, the hadith mentions, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man salla alayhi salatan wahida salla Allahu alayhi biha ashra. O kama qal alayhi salatu salam. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever asks Allah to bless me once, Allah will bless that person ten times. So these are warnings against people who choose not to take advantage of these very virtuous, uh, righteous actions. And the first one is, obviously all of these are important, but the first one is what we're focusing on now. Where the Prophet ﷺ said, "Man adraka shahr Ramadan, wa lam yuqfar lahu, fa dakhla al nari, fa baghdahu Allah, fa baghdahu Allah, kull amin, fa kull tu amin." That verily, Gabriel, angel Jibril, came to me and said, "Whoever reaches the month of Ramadan and he is not forgiven, and then he is not forgiven, then he will enter the hellfire. Allah will cast him far away." So say amin, and the Prophet ﷺ said amin. We mentioned previously that the Hadith mentions that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that. Uh, Ramadan, or Ramadan, uh, that when, when Ramadan comes or when Ramadan enters, the gates of Jannah are opened. The gates of the heaven are open. The gates of Jannah are open. There's two different narrations. And the gates of the hellfire, the gates of uh, Jahannam are closed. And the devils are chained. Right? So we mentioned previously, these things have been given to us in this blessed month that make salvation easy, that make salvation easy for the, pers per uh, for the person to attain in this month. The gates of Jannah are open. The gates of the hellfire are closed. The devils are chained. These three things make it easy for a person to achieve salvation hereafter. So for a person to reach the month of Ramadan and they don't become forgiven and they are not forgiven, this really means they did not take advantage of the holy month. They did not exert themselves and they did not uh, take advantage of these endowments and these blessings and these charities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted his believing servants in this month, right? It's, uh, in other words, if you don't achieve, if we don't achieve salvation in Ramadan, when do we expect to achieve it? When do we expect to be forgiven? Uh, for our sins to enter paradise, to, to be granted paradise, to be saved from the hellfire. When do we expect it to be given if we are not, if we do not achieve it during the holy month of Ramadan when it's made easy for the person, right? And if you look at this hadith, this is not any ordinary servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dua. This is Sayyidina Jibreel, Angel Jibreel, Ra'isul Malaika, 
right? Ar-Ruh al-Qudus, Ar-Ruh al-Amin, right? The highest strength of all the angels, the angel of revelation, the angel of punishment, right? Sayyidina Jibreel, he's the one coming down and he's making these du'as. He's the one making these du'as. And then look at who's saying Amin to these du'as. It's the best of creation. It's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best of creation, the most beloved creation in the judgment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the most beloved creation to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So you have the best of the pro the best of the angels making dua and the best of the prophets, the best of creation confirming the dua. So this uh, hadith should really make us think, have we really used this month to achieve salvation and to be free from the hellfire and to enter, be granted entry into Jannah, being spared the punishment of the hellfire, being granted salvation, right? If we did not take advantage of this month and we somehow were not forgiven and we enter the hellfire, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, this is really an ultimate loss, right? So this hadith reminds us to use this month as it is easy for us. The, the, the endowments and the charities that have been given to us have been made easy for us to achieve salvation in this blessed month. So this is what we should really be focusing on in these last couple of days of this blessed month of Ramadan, making sure we ask, making sure we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for salvation, for forgiveness, for his mercy, for entry into Jannah, right? And this is what we should be focusing on. Abu Hurairah reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَرَغِمَ أَنْفُ رَجُلٍ دَخَلَ عَلَيْهِ رَمَضَانِ ثُمَّ انْسَلَخَ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُغْفَرَ لَهُ Abu Hurairah reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, May he be humbled who enters the month of Ramadan and it passes before he is forgiven. And this hadith is mirroring the same meaning of the hadith we mentioned previously yeah. that it is a great shame for someone to have reached Ramadan and to have finished Ramadan and to have done all that they were supposed to do in this month of Ramadan and yet they do not, they are not forgiven of their sins. They are not granted entry into Jannah. They are not uh, uh, granted salvation from the hellfire, right? As we mentioned, what other time can a person have where they can have all these things offered to them and have all these blessings and these endowments? So the Prophet ﷺ is reminding us to take advantage of this blessed month that we have. And these are other hadiths that we read all throughout our sessions, right? Um, we read them all extensively, alhamdulillah. And uh, we talked about Laylat al-Qadr, we talked about the last 10 nights, the virtues of them. I just want to make sure we've covered everything. We mentioned the virtues of suhoor and taking a pre-dawn meal and making sure that a person um, has these uh, sunan of the Prophet Sallallahu We talked about the virtues of this month. As we know, Ramadan is the month of Quran. This is the month in which the Quran was revealed. And it should also, it was also the month in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would review the entire Quran every night with Sayyidina Jibreel. And on the day he passed, and on the year that he passed away, alayhi salatu wasalam, he reviewed it with Sayyidina Jibreel twice, right? Tamam. Let's see. We mentioned this yesterday. Inna lillahi ataqa'i fi kulli yawmin wa laylatin, yani fi Ramadan, li kulli abdin minhum da'watun mustajaba. That verily Allah has people he redeems, meaning he forgives, right? Grants pardon, grants salvation from the hellfire in every day and night of Ramadan, right? That's why from one of the famous supplications we make, Allah ma'ajana min ataqa'i shahri Ramadan. Oh Allah, make us amongst those who are freed, grant us forgive, uh, gra granted pardon, granted mercy, granted salvation from the hellfire of Ramadan during this blessed month of Ramadan, right? And every servant among them has a supplication that will be answered, right? And as we know, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged us to make supplication at the time of iftar because this is the time when the supplication will not be rejected. So if you look at Ramadan as being 29 or 30 um, days, depending on if the moon is sighted, then a person will have, inshallah, 29 or 30 accepted supplications at the time of iftar. 
nowadays what we see at the time of a thought people start you know chit chatting and talking and they start wasting time and, and, the, and these things really at the time of the thought we need to be focused on making dua making ibadah making dhikr that way when it's time to break our fast and maghrib comes in and this is a time when dua is accepted we make dua and our dua will be granted and we should use these, these times when dua is accepted, as we said, to achieve salvation, right? Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for entry into paradise and for a salvation from the hellfire. And there are many uh, duas from the sunnah, which all support uh, this type of meaning when we make dua. For example, Allah man yas'aluka ridaka wal jannah wa a'udhu bika min sakhatika wal nar, which means, oh Allah, I ask you for your acceptance and for your paradise, and I seek your protection from your wrath and your hellfire, right? Or you could say, Allahumma ajirni min al-nar, right? Which we said is sunnah to say seven times after Fajr, seven times after Maghrib. And this means, oh Allah, save me from the hellfire. Or we could say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adab al-nar, which means, oh our Lord, grant us the good of this world, the good of the hereafter, and save us from the hellfire. So when we have these times when dua is accepted, we should not, as they say, think small, right? Uh, um, obviously, there's nothing wrong with making, you know, specific detailed du'as that you need, right? Like, for example, Allah, help me uh, marry this person or, you know, get this job or there's nothing wrong with that uh, in principle. But when you have a time where du'a is accepted, you should make a du'a that's encompassing of everything, right? You make a du'a that'll take that where you want the take the the management of all your needs and all your affairs, both in the dunya and the akhirah, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and his generosity is not limited, where you have to ask a very specific thing and only one thing. No, you can say, for example, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana fil akhirati hasana wa adab nar right? Which means our Lord grant us the good of this world and the hereafter and save us from the hellfire. Because if you're granted the good of this dunya and the good of the hereafter, which is Jannah, and you're safe from the hellfire, what else could a servant want, right? And this supplication was one that, that the Sahaba said the Prophet Sallallahu would make abundantly. So when we have our, these times when dua is accepted, we should make a dua that encompasses everything. Everything from this world, everything from the year after. All of our worries in this world, all of our worries in the year after. Right? Like I said, there's nothing wrong with asking uh, specific dua, right? Specific things. But when we make dua, we should not forget to ask for the encompassing things. Right? That take care that I'll lead to everything being, being taken care of, everything being managed, right? Come on. All right. We mentioned that in this month of Ramadan, from the excellencies is that Prophet ﷺ said, Man Sama Ramadan, or Man Kamahu, Man Kama Qadri. Prophet ﷺ said, Man sama Ramadan, whoever fasts Ramadan. Man qamahu, whoever stood up in it, meaning in prayer. Man qama Laylat al Qadri, whoever stood up to pray Laylat al Qadri. Right? All of their previous sins will be forgiven. Right? And this should be an encouragement for us to keep going. We still have a couple days. We still have a couple fasts left. We still have a couple tarawih left. Maybe. You are, depending on where you're praying, you are reaching the end of the Qur'an, or we call Khatm al-Qur'an. There's also a very blessed moment and occasion when dua is accepted. And it was narrated that Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas or some of the great Sahaba, whenever they were close to finishing the, or completing the recitation of the entire Qur'an, they would gather their family members together. They would gather their friends and their family members together and make dua because this is a time when dua is accepted, when the when the... Quran is completed and being read from cover to cover. Um, and it was also said that some of the Sahaba, when they would walk in the circles, the Quran circles, or there are circles of reading, they would look for anyone close to finishing the Quran and sit with them, right? So in these last few nights, we should take advantage of these type of things that we can still use to achieve have our previous sins forgiven and seek reward, right? We still have a couple of we still have a couple of fasts left. We still have a couple of tarawih left. We might have the end of the Qur'an, the Khatm al-Qur'an. We can still use this to have our du'as accept, inshallah. So we can still take advantage of these wonderful nights that we still have, inshallah ta'ala. And these are the different narrations which we covered, that whoever stands at night to pray in it, whoever fasts in the daytime, 
whoever prays Laylatul Qadr, prays at night during Laylatul Qadr, then all their previous sins will be forgiven, right? We also mentioned this, Salatul Khams wal Jumu'atu ila Jumu'atu wa Ramadanu ila Ramadan, mukaffiratun ma baynahunna idha jtanabat al kabair right? Ma jtanabat al kabair afwan. The five prayers, the Friday to the Friday, the Ramadan to the Ramadan will be an expiation for the sins between them as long as the major sins are avoided. So as long as we avoid the major sins, then between one prayer to the next, between one Jumu'ah to the next Jumu'ah, from one Ramadan to the next Ramadan, this will be a means by which the minor sins and the misdeeds are forgiven. Right? And we mentioned that Ramadan is essentially a, it is without a doubt a pillar of our faith. It is something that every Muslim understands and accepts as being a pillar of the faith, an obligation that must be done, even to the extent that non-Muslims are aware that Ramadan is an obligation and a pillar of our faith, and it is something that everyone who is able to fast is required to do. So, I think for the most part, we have covered every, or mostly every hadith, and we were able to reach our objective. So I don't want to, uh, for those who've been following, I don't want to keep repeating. Uh, uh, just want to make sure we, we did everything as best we can. We mentioned also that in this month of Ramadan, there are calls, different calls that are given out, right? The Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the first night of Ramadan, the devils are chained and the jinn are restrained. The gates of the hellfire are closed and none of its gates are open. The gates of paradise are open and none of its gates are closed and a heavenly caller announce, announces, meaning from the angels. O seeker of good, come near. O seeker of evil, stop short. Allah has those he saves from the hellfire, and that is during every night. So every night there is a vast amount of Muslims who are forgiven of their sins and granted uh, salvation. Alhamdulillah, these are what we've been covering all throughout the month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it all a means by which we are benefited with our knowledge and we act upon it. Because remember, knowledge is not for this. Not, knowledge is not just for the sake of hearing it. Knowledge is for implementation. The more and more we learn from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that means the more and more we have to implement into our lives and work harder. Uh, with work harder and striving to become a better believer, right? And as we reach these last couple of days, as we know, last night was the twenty seventh night of Layl. It was twenty seventh night of Ramadan, which is possibly a night of Laylat al Qadr. We still have the 29th night. It's possible that the 29th night could be Laylatul Qadr as well. So let us not forget to say the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu recommended to, our, to Sayyidah Aisha, his beloved wife, our, our, our mother, because Sayyidah Aisha and the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu are the mothers of the believers. The Prophet Sallallahu told, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told her to say, Allahumma inna ka'afu wa tuhaybu al-afu wa fa'afu anni. So this is one of the most important supplications we should be keeping on our tongues as we reach and complete the end of Ramadan. And for those of us who are in Atikaf, we're able to spend some time in doing Atikaf. For the men that is inside the Masajid, for the women that is inside the uh, prayer space or the prayer room of her home, we should also try to spend as much time as we can in making sure we have those focused, quiet moments of reflection and worship and ibadah and dua. And finally, we mentioned also at the end of Ramadan charity, what is called Zakatul Fitr or Sadaqatul Fitr. This is something that every Muslim um, that has the money to pay is necessitated to pay. And this should be, um, as the Prophet ﷺ ordered, it should be given to before people go out for the Eid prayer. And usually it's, it's very affordable. It's usually about $15 per person. So... We should also make sure that we've paid our zakat al-fitr. And if we can pay more than that, then let us give even more, inshallah ta'ala. Um, because as we know, this is a holy month. And when any good deed is done during a holy month or in a holy time or a holy place, then it is only increased in reward, right? Uh, Imam al-Zuhri said, one tasbiha, one uh, dhikr, one, one utterance of dhikr to say subhanallah one time 
is better than a thousand times outside of Ramadan. So maybe we give only $15, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies a hundred times, a thousand times, or however many times he wills. Maybe you give only $20 and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by virtue of this month and by virtue of your intention will multiply it and make it count as 2,000 or 2 million, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. So as we enter the, the final days, let us make sure we pay our zakat al-fitr and if we can give even more, then let us give even more inshallah ta'ala. And we said the virtue of zakat al-fitr is that it acts, as a, it acts as a cleanser of our fasting. Maybe we didn't nullify our fast with food or drink, but maybe we reduce the reward of our fast because of the things we said, the time we wasted, the vain talk, the misbehavior. So let us, when we give our zakat al-fitr, inshallah ta'ala, it'll make up or be an expiation or a cleanser for our fast in, these, in those instances of lack of proper etiquette. And finally, we said that we've learned we've uh, we've accustomed our bodies and our minds and our souls to fasting for a month let us not leave this great act of worship after this blessed month of ramadan let us continue to fast after ramadan especially if you can fast six days in the month of shawwal the month after ramadan and they don't have to be six consecutive days they can be spread out throughout the month but let us not forget to fast six days after this blessed month because the prophet ﷺ mentioned when Sama Ramadan, Tumma at Baho Sitta Minsha, well in Kana Kasiyam at Dahar. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan and then follows it with six days of fasting in the month of Shawwal, Kana Kasiyam at Dahar. It is as if they fasted the entire year, as if the entire year they were fasting and their reward will be like someone fasting for the entire year. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this and to make these last nights of Ramadan. Nights of mercy, forgiveness, salvation from the hellfire, accept the dua, and may he all grant us what we are seeking in our dua in these last couple of nights, and may he, all, and may he make this Ramadan, not our last, and may he make this Ramadan, the Ramadan by which we are granted entry into paradise, freedom from the hellfire, and salvation. And please do not forget to keep me and your brothers and sisters at Mecca Center in the Ummah in your duas, especially our brothers and sisters in Palestine guarding Masjid al-Aqsa, the third holiest site of our faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and protect you all and grant you all that you are seeking from the goodness of this month. Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakullah bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfir kawad subi laik. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidu Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.